Let us stand and face Jerusalem for our opening scripture reading, which today comes from Psalm 131, verses 1 to 3. <clears throat> okay, go ahead. Lord, Lord, my heart is not haughty. My heart is not haughty. Nor mine eyes lofty. Nor mine eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself. Neither do I exercise myself. In great matters. In great matters. Or in things too high for me. Or in things too high for me. Surely I have behaved. Surely I have behaved. And quieted myself. And quieted myself. As a child. As a child. That is weaned of his mother. That is weaned of his mother. My soul is even. My soul is even as a weaned child. As a weaned child. Let Israel hope in the Lord. Let Israel hope in the Lord. From henceforth. From henceforth. And forever. And forever. Praise the Lord God of Israel. And now for the reading of the law, which makes us wise unto salvation. Come from Exodus 20, verses 1 to 17. Exodus 20, verses 1 to 17. Okay, go ahead. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which I brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them, for I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me, and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day, and hallowed it. Honour thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbour, thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbour's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor's. Okay, let's go to Revelation 22, and we're going to read verses 14 and 15. Okay, go ahead. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth, and maketh a lie. When it all is said and done, let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let's go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, and we're going to read verse 13 and 14. Okay, please read it. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Hear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Man is a species, brothers and sisters, covering both male and female. And we have heard a conclusion of the whole matter. We don't have to be running around wondering what our purpose is in this life. We have just found out Fear God and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Thank you. Please be seated.
Well, hello, hello, and good afternoon, or good morning, depending on your location. And welcome to the Israel of God Bible study class, where we let the Bible speak, teaching from Genesis to Revelation by subject and title. It is good to stand before you on the Lord's Sabbath day. My name is Brother Mark Azaria, and reading for me today is our sister Jennifer Ruth. Here at the Israel of God, we use a King James Bible, and we are in your pen, plenty of patience, and bring your writing pad. Please do not interrupt the lesson while I am teaching, but if you have any questions related to the lesson, then please see me if you're in-house, or if you're online, you can send an email to uk at the israelofgod.com. I'd like to take this opportunity to give a shout out to our new and returning visitors. To my former classmates from Victoria All Age School in Jamaica, Maureen, Marlene, and Stevie. Our family in Ghana, but a Kobe, Sis Crystal sends a love to you. Um, but a Kobe and Sis Crystal send a love to you. Okay? We got Sister Esther and Selector Rev in Holland. Our family in Barbados, in Egypt, Guyana, Australia, Japan, Zimbabwe, Kenya, India, Indonesia, Philippines, Dubai, South Africa, South Korea, USA, Jamaica, Canada, St. Croix, Trinidad and Tobago, St. Lucia, St. Kitts and Nevis, Italy, Germany, Nigeria, and all around the UK. And if you're from a country not called out, please let us know. Okay? We also um, want to, of course, shout out to our sisters and brothers in house. Um, and a shout out to the Pennycook sisters. They're in London. And the children in house. Zephaniah, it's good to see you. Hillary, Joely, and Joseph. I also want to give a shout out to my own family and um, my children also, and all the family near or far. Oh, it is that time of year, brothers and sisters, where people start picking up bugs and going down with influenza and all sorts. Oh, Sister Shrina and Bro Saka, um, we pray that you have a speedy recovery and uh, anyone else who may be feeling unwell. Okay, brothers and sisters, the title of the le lesson today is The Biblical Account of Creation, Facts or Myths. Now, why do we do lessons like this? You know, we have people who say that there is no God, who call themselves atheists and I would ask the people who identify this way to consider what I see as a fair question. Do you know everything about everything that there is to be known? Of course I've never come across anyone who have said yes so I always like to say that means you're not an atheist. Then there are people who say they are agnostics which means that they're not sure either way then there are those who believe without a shadow of a doubt that God exists. Now, both the people who declare themselves atheists and the agnostics will say to those that believe, where is your proof for the existence of God? And in truth, they have a point because we cannot readily point and say, dear God is, or here he is. But what we do have is a series of 66 books put together termed Biblios, a binding of books which is called the Bible. It is a spiritual book. And people are chasing spiritual things today because they see that materialism does not fill the emptiness they feel within nor answers the question that plagued the whole human race. And so we invite you to come on a journey with us 
as we explore what the Bible has to say. Well, first and foremost, where did the Bible come from? Let's open our Bibles. To 2 Peter chapter 1. 2 Peter chapter 1. People ask these questions. And they're good questions. Two Peter one, and we're gonna read sixteen two twenty one. Okay, verse sixteen. Please read it. For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of His Majesty. For He received from God the Father honor and glory. When there came such a voice to him from the excellent glory, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. We have also a more sure word of prophecy whereunto ye do well that ye take heed as unto a light that sh shineth in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of God spake they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Oh, holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. What the Apostle Peter is letting the whole world know is that we are not following cleverly made up stories, brothers and sisters. They were eyewitnesses of Jesus Christ. Now consider the impact that Jesus Christ has had on this world. So much so that history has been divided in two by him. We measure time by him, which we call it, uh, BC, which I said before Christ, some say BCE, which is before our common era. And then also in AD, which is Anno Domini, which is Latin, which means in the year of our Lord. But the Apostle Peter is letting us know, despite all this, them being eyewitnesses, this, there is a greater, more powerful witness than him telling us of his eyewitness account. There is more solid evidence. Where and what is that? The words of the prophets, brothers and sisters. Now let us see how powerful the words of the prophets of the Bible are. Let us go to Amos, the third chapter. Amos, the third chapter. And we are going to read one verse, and that is verse 7. Amos 3 and verse 7. Please read it. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Now, let us hear what is said here, brothers and sisters. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants, the, the prophets. The whole Bible is a revelation of God to mankind through his servants, the prophets. Until then, it was a secret, brothers and sisters. We didn't know nothing about God. So the real prophets do not speak according to their own words. Only what God told them. Now, this being the case, we need to find out who the prophets are. Because in our time, brothers and sisters, we hear people saying Nostradamus said this or that or the prophet Muhammad has said this or that and then there are prophet factories springing up everywhere in Christendom mass producing prophets and prophetesses who are saying the Lord told me this and the Lord told me that. 
So how do we authenticate all these prophets and prophetesses, brothers and sisters? We need to understand these things. So let us just back up to Amos, the second chapter. And we're going to read verses 10 and 11. Amos 2, verses 10 and 11. Okay. Please read it. Also, I brought you up from the land of Egypt and led you 40 years through the wilderness to possess the land of the Amorite. Uh -huh. And I raised up of your sons for prophets and of your young men for Nazarite. Who is the God of this Bible addressing when he says that? Go ahead, read. Is it not even thus, O ye children of Israel, saith the Lord? Now please do not confuse, be confused by the people who the world call the Jews today. There are even many among them who testify to who the true Jews are. And we can eliminate a whole lot of prophets and prophetesses with a simple question, brothers and sisters. Which book in the Bible did you write? Now, some people say there was religious books and ancient civilizations long before the Bible. Now, we will let the Bible answer those questions as we progress. But let us turn to Isaiah the 46th chapter. <clears throat> Isaiah 46. And we're going to read 9 and 10. Isaiah 46, verses 9 and 10. Okay, go ahead. Please read it. Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, mm -hmm. declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Now, this is no loose statement, brothers and sisters. We cannot even begin to interpret the mind of this guy so he has to tell us brothers and sisters and he's letting us know that he has declared the end to the beginning why is that because all history is his story we did a, a lesson last sabbath titled world history told by the prophets which was done by our senior pastor which you will find on our website theisraelofgod.com Please watch it and you will see that the words of this God has stood every test that men throw at it, brothers and sisters. Now let's go to Romans, the first chapter. Romans 1. And we're going to read verse 20. And then we're going to back up and read verse 19. Okay, go ahead. Please read it. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. But the word is telling us that the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. Even his eternal power and Godhead. And that man has no excuse for not believing in him, brothers and sisters. Back up to verse 19 and read. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. For God has shewed it unto them. So God has shown it to us even though he is invisible to us. Oh, when we say God, what are we talking about, brothers and sisters? I remember talking to this lady once and the moment I mentioned God, she was confused. What does that mean? So let's go to John 4 and we're going to read one verse. John chapter 4, St. John chapter 4. And we're going to read verse 24. John 24. Uh, John 4 and verse 24. Okay, Sister Jim Fruit, please read it. God is a spirit, 
and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth so what we're finding here is that god is spirit brothers and sisters that is not flesh and blood as we are god this english translation from the word hebrew word elohim is a plural unity one god family with more than one member called the godhead and they that worship him must worship in spirit and in truth now worship is an acknowledgement of god's sovereignty brothers and sisters and in spirit and truth means we do the things according as he has commanded us now we read at the opening what the whole duty of man is fear god and keep his commandments let's go forward to john 6 and we're going to read one verse and that is 63 john 6 and 63 Okay, please read it. It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. It is a spirit that quickeneth. When we use this word spirit <clears throat> in the in a Bible, brothers and sisters, there are different forms and meanings. It depends on the context. Here, now, apart from God being a spirit. We find here, it is a spirit that quicken it. So what spirit is that? It is his word, brothers and sisters. And quicken means to make us alive. So the flesh profit nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. This is why I say that the opening, brothers and sisters, that the Bible is a spiritual book. Dictated by God, who is a spirit. Now, across the globe, we have governments heading up countries with a leader or leaders, and we see there are structures, there are laws, and there are regulations which govern our society. Even amongst primitive people, they have laws, brothers and sisters. Now, is this an accident? Let's go to Colossians, the first chapter. Colossians 1. And we're going to read verse 16 and 17. Colossians 1, verse 16 and 17. Okay, Sister Jennifer Ruth. Verse 16, please read it. For by him were all things created mm -hmm. that are in heaven yes. and that are in earth, uh -huh. visible and invisible. Yes. Whether they be th thrones yes. or dominions yes. or principalities uh -huh. or powers. Yes all things were created by him all is an absolute go ahead and read and for him uh-huh and he is before all things yes and by him all things consist can we not identify with this brothers and sisters in this world that we are here upon planet earth and can look up in the sky and see what is termed heaven and we know that there are things visible and invisible we see thrones, dominions, principalities, or powers. And this is a combination of natural and spiritual. Now, all that we are seeing, we are reading, was created by him and for him, the creator. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews 1. Are we going to read verse 1? Uh, verse 7 and skip to 14. Hebrews 1, verse 7, and then skip to 14. Okay. Verse 7, please read it. And of the angels, he said, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. Now, here we have mention of angels who are also spirit beings. What is their purpose? Skip to verse... Um, 14. 14 and read are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation they are ministering that is serving spirits brothers and sisters they work for god in carrying out his orders let's go to isaiah the 57th chapter i'm going to read one verse and that's 15 isaiah 57 and 
Okay, please read it. But thus said the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy um, place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. This is a Godhead comprising of two beings identified in the Bible as Jesus and Jehovah. They are eternal spirit beings with no beginning or no end. And this is why we cannot find in the Bible anywhere to celebrate the birth of Christ. How can you celebrate the birth of an immortal, eternal being, brothers and sisters? The universe, however, has a beginning. Okay. Can you bring up the first one for me, please? Because when we're talking about universe, what are we talking about? Sister Jennifer Ruth, please read it. Universe, all existing matter and space, considered as a whole. The cosmos, the universe, is believed to be at least 10 billion light years in diameter and contains a vast number of galaxies. It has been expanded since its creation in the Big Bang about 13 billion years ago. Okay. Two, a particular sphere of activity or experience. The front parlor was the hub of her universe. So they give us an, an example there. But brothers and sisters, when we hear stuff such as uh, light years, what are we talking about? Let's find out, brothers and sisters. Okay, Sister Jennifer, please read. Light year, a unit, a unit of ast astronomical distance equivalent to the distance that light travels in one year. Okay. Which, which is nine thousand four hundred and six. Well, it's like nine point four six zero seven. Yes. Yeah. Multiplied by 10 by 10 to the 12, 12 kilometers. And what does that equate to? Nearly 6 million million miles. Okay, go ahead. Informal, a long distance or great amount. The new range puts them light years ahead of the competition. So they give an example here again. Okay, but light brothers and sisters travels at 186,000 miles per second which is 671 million miles per hour. So what they're telling us is that in one year, the distance that light travels is nearly 6 million million miles, if you can wrap your head around that. So the scientists are telling us, brothers and sisters, they believe, as guesswork, that the universe is to be at least 10 billion light years in diameter i don't know if you can possibly even begin to consider that they simply cannot quantify it brothers and sisters the more they discover is the more they realize that there is more to be discovered let's go to jeremiah the 31st chapter jeremiah 31 I'm going to read one verse, and that's verse 37. Jeremiah 31 and verse 37. Okay, verse 37. What did it say? Read, the, read. Thus said the Lord, uh -huh. If heaven above can be measured, uh -huh. and the foundations of the earth search out beneath, uh -huh. I will also cast off all the seed of Israel, for all that they have done, said the lord now we deal with the subject of israel continuously brothers and sisters god priest and prophet to all the nations and we deal with that in other lessons but our creator is saying here though through the mouth of jeremiah the prophet we cannot even begin to search out the earth so how are we gonna measure heaven brothers and sisters 
Let me bring up the next slide for me, please. Now, oh, what is this bit of equipment that we're looking at here? Can you bring up the next one? And find out what it is. Okay, Sister Jennifer, can you read that for me, please? What is the Hubble Space Telescope? That's what it is, the Hubble Space Telescope. Read it. The Hubble Space Telescope is a large telescope in space. Mm -hmm. NASA launched Hubble in 1990. Mm -hmm. Hubble is as long as a large school bus. It weighs as much as two adult elephants. Hubble travels around Earth at about five miles per second. That is at f as fast as driving a car from the east coast of the United States to the West Coast in 10 minutes. That is fast, brothers and sisters. Now, how far can it look? Bring up the next one, please. Okay, please read it. Hubble faces towards space. It takes pictures of planets, stars, and galaxies. Hubble has seen stars being born. Hubble has seen stars die. It has seen galaxies that are trillions of miles away. That is how far away? Trillions of miles away. Okay, go ahead, read. Hubble also has seen comet pieces crash into the gases above Juniper. Uh-huh, Ju Jupiter. Jupiter. Uh-huh. Scientists have learned a lot about space from Hubble pictures. The pictures are beautiful to look at too. Okay, let's just have a look at some of these pictures that uh, has been taken. And Hubble as well too is being succeeded now uh, by a new telescope. Let's just look at some of these pictures which it has beamed back. There's some breathtaking pictures, brothers and sisters. Okay. Just giving you a, a little view. Some of the stuff, brothers and sisters, what they send uh, 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 beam back to us is just absolutely amazing. Now, let us turn to the book of Genesis. And Genesis means beginnings. Now, let us go to Genesis 1. And we're going to read 1 to 10. Genesis 1, verses 1 to 10. Okay, Sister Jennifer, verse 1. Please read. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So, in the beginning, God created. Now, how long ago was in the beginning, brothers and sisters? When we have just looked and seen that it has taken these guys so long to look out into space. Trillions of light years away. How are we even going to begin to put a time on how long ago was in the beginning? We have no idea. Are these answers those who say there were civilizations, uh, civilization or religious writings before the Bible? Yes, there may well be so. But this is the God of the Bible, brothers and sisters. How are you going to get back past him after what we just looked at? He is outside of time and space, brothers and sisters, outside of it. And he created only what we can see so far with them telescopes. What they report back. And as they say, it just looks like it keeps expanding. They can't measure it. So... How are you going to try and put some limit upon this God? He has revealed to us what we need to know, brothers and sisters. 
Now, continue to read, Sister Jennifer Rowe. Two. And the earth was without form and void, mm -hmm. and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. Let there be light. And there was light. Yes, go ahead. And God saw the light, that it was good. Mm -hmm. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. So, brothers and sisters, we see evening and morning equal one day in time that is 24 hours to us. The new day starts when the sun goes down. Not at midnight, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and the evening and the morning were the second day. Mm -hmm. And God said, Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the day land appear let the dry land appear and let the dry land appear mm -hmm. and it was so Go ahead. and god called the dry land earth and the gathering together of the waters called he seas can we have a slide of the firmament up there so brothers and sisters what we understand here is that there's a huge body of water above and then there is a space that's called the firmament and then below another huge body of water so we just needed to just have a look at that brothers and sisters now put your marker here because we want to explore this word heaven we are going to see whether it is singular or whether it's pure plural whether there's more than one so put your marker here and we're going to go to Psalms 148. Psalms 148. And we're going to read verse 1 to 5. Psalm 148, verses 1 to 5. Okay, please read it. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Mm -hmm. Praise him in the heights. Yes. Praise ye him, all the, his angels. Praise ye him, all his hosts. Uh -huh. Praise ye him, sun and moon. Praise him, all ye stars of light. Yes. Praise him, ye heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heaven. Mm -hmm. Let them praise the name of the Lord, yes. for he commanded, uh -huh. and they were created. He commanded, and they were created. Heavens of heaven. So how many are there, brothers and sisters? Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. 2 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. We're going to read verse 1 to 2. 2 Corinthians 12, verses 1 to 2. Okay, please read it. It is not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Mm -hmm. I knew a man in Christ above 14 years old ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, or whether out of the body, I cannot tell. God knoweth such an one caught up in the third heaven. Mm -hmm. So the apostle Paul had an encounter with Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. And he did not know in what form he was, whether in the spirit or in the body. But we find there there are three heavens, brothers and sisters. The third heaven is where God has his throne. The second heaven, where the sun, moon, and stars are. And the first heaven is the earth. Now let's just have a, 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 a look at this.
So we see the third heaven. Uh, uh, we've had this great body of water. Then we have the space. And then we see we have the second heaven where the stars, the sun, moon, and the stars are. And then we see that um, there is what we call the first heaven here, which is her. So people will say, well, hang on a minute. How do you know that earth is the first heaven? Well, let's let the book tell us, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Isaiah 28, chapter. Isaiah 28. Okay. Verse 9 and 10. Please read it. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Uh -huh. And whom shall he take to understand doctrine? Whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Brothers and sisters, whatever knowledge we have, we must be taught. We must be taught, brothers and sisters. The same thing here with doctrine. We are talking about the word of God. And we got to humble ourselves in order to be, to be taught, brothers and sisters. Uh, how was we got to be taught? Go ahead. For precept must be upon precept. Mm -hmm. Precept upon precept. Mm -hmm. Line upon line. Mm -hmm. Line upon line. Mm -hmm. Here a little and there a little. Our precept is a rule that uh, regulates our behaviors and thoughts, brothers and sisters. That's why I said to be taught. We have to humble ourselves like a little child. And so we are told how we have to understand the word of God, brothers and sisters. We got to precept out everything. I was talking to the gentleman only yesterday who had himself in a lot of bother for the simple reason that he just wanted to pick out a few verses and then try to stand firm on that. And I had to be saying, this is where you're messing yourself up, brother. You have to precept everything out from the word of God. And so this is how we do it. So now let us um, see what is taking place here. Because God tells history, the, how God tells history is copied by how they make movies today, brothers and sisters. They show a little bit here, then they jump to the future, then back to the beginning, and they keep repeating this process, and then everything falls into place at the end. So let's go to Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. Deuteronomy 30. Are we going to read 1 to 5? Deuteronomy 30, verses 1 to 5. Okay, please read it. And it shall come to pass, when all, thing, all these things are come, upon thee mm -hmm. the blessing and the curse which i have set before thee and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whether the lord thy god had driven them thee and shalt return unto the lord thy god and shalt obey his voice according to all that i command thee this day thou and thy children with all thine heart and with all thy soul mm -hmm that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. Go ahead. If any of thine be driven out into the outmost parts of the heaven, from thence will the Lord thy God gather thee mm -hmm. and from thence will he fetch thee Go ahead. and the lord thy god will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed mm -hmm. and thou shalt possess it and he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy fathers now this is concerning god's priests and prophets to all the nations the nation of israel we rebelled against him and he executed judgments upon us called curses and scattered us into every nation upon the earth and the curses identify us to the teeth but the Lord is going to return and gather us, brothers and sisters, 
said there from Eden of where scattered out to the uttermost parts of heaven. That there represents the earth's brothers and sisters. That's where we're at. So that's how we know that the earth is the first heaven. So let us go back to Genesis, the first chapter. I'm going to pick it up at verse 10 and read to 19. Verse 10 and read to 19. Okay, verse 10, please read. And God called the dry land earth, mm -hmm. and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. Uh -huh. And God saw that it was good. And we can see it too. Go ahead, read. And God said, let the earth bring forth grass. We see that too. Go ahead. The herb yielding seed, uh -huh. and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind uh -huh. whose seed it is in itself yes. upon the earth uh -huh. and it was so only this morning I was talking to little Zephaniah he was reading the Bible to me and even he was identified I just asked him simple questions do you know any fruit trees and he start reeling them off apples and pears and and I said what's in them he said seeds so I said what happens when they put in the earth he said they grow and produce more so brothers and sisters a little child understands this that's what i'm saying go ahead and read 12 and the earth brought forth grass and herb yielding seed after his kind uh -huh. and the tree yielding fruit whose seed was it in itself after his kind yes and god saw that it was good go ahead and the evening and the morning were the third day. Go ahead and read. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night. Uh -huh. And let them be for signs. For signs. Signs and, identify things. Go ahead. And for seasons. And for seasons. And for days. And for days. And years. Yes, brothers and sisters, we've got them. Oh, go ahead. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven uh -huh. to give light upon the earth. And it was so. Go ahead and read. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day mm -hmm. and the lesser light to rule the night. Yes. He made the stars also. And they are with us to this day, brothers and sisters. We see the sun, we see the moon, and we see the stars. Go ahead, read. 17. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven. In the space. Go ahead. To give light upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And to rule over the day and over the night. And to divide the light from the darkness. Yes. And God saw that it was good. Read. And the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Okay, now. So... I was told in school, brothers and sisters, that we have four seasons, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Let's, let's just see what the book says. Put your marker here, and we're going to look forward to Genesis, the eighth chapter. And we're going to read verse 22. Genesis 8 and 22. Okay, please read it. While the earth remaineth seed time and uh -huh. harvest. Seed time and harvest. And cold and heat. And cold and heat. And summer and winter. And summer and winter. And day and night. And day and night. Shall not cease. And here the word of God confirms to us. He has given us two seasons, brothers and sisters. Will remain as long as the earth remains. Let's go back to Genesis, the first chapter. And we're going to pick it up at verse 20 and read to 28. Okay. Verse 20. And, read. and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that has life mm -hmm. and fowl that may fly above the earth uh -huh. in the open firmament of heaven. And we see birds flying around in the open firmament, brothers and sisters, in space. Go ahead, read. And God created great whales uh -huh. and every living creature that moveth, uh -huh. which the waters brought forth abundantly. And they're still discovering creatures uh, in there which they had not known before existed, brothers and sisters, in the waters, in the seas. Go ahead, read. After their kind. And everyone come forth after their own kind. Go ahead. And every winged fowl after his kind. Mm -hmm. And God saw that it was good. Yes. And God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, 
and fill the waters in the seas and let fowl multiply in the earth. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the fifth day Go ahead. and god said let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth after his kind and it was so go ahead and read and god made the beast of the earth after his kind mm -hmm. and cattle after their kind yeah and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind and god saw that it was and good. we can see all with our natural eyes brothers and sisters all these here which god talk about the earth and the seas teeming with innumerable creatures every one of them bringing forth after their own kind they don't produce nothing else brothers and sisters so go ahead now and read 26 mm -hmm. and god said let us make man in our image yes after our likeness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea mm -hmm. and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Go ahead. So God created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Read. And God blessed them. And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth mm -hmm. and subdue it mm -hmm. and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every creeping, every living thing that, that moveth upon the earth. Now here we see the Godhead declaring in unity, let us make man in our image after our likeness. But we see a shift, brothers and sisters. All the creatures beforehand created brought forth more after their own kind. We are in the image of God at the moment, but not after his kind. What does that mean? We have pointed out that God was a spirit, brothers and sisters. And that was he was immortal. We are not spirit beings yet, and we are not immortals. But we have been given dominion, rulership, sovereignty, governance. Over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle and over all the earth. And that we can see, we might be, man might be making a terrible job of it, but he is ruling brothers and sisters. Now, we find out here also too what man is. Man is a species, both male and female, who he commanded to be fruitful and multiply. This can only happen between a male and female. But we see something very interesting here too, brothers and sisters. The command to replenish the earth. Now, let us just put our marker here and we are going to have a look at this word replenish. When it comes up, Sister Jennifer Ruth, please read it. Replenish. Fill something up again. He replenished Justin's glass with mineral water. Mm -hmm. Similar, restore a stock or supply to a former level or condition. Mm -hmm. All creatures need sleep, sleep to replenish their energies. So they just give us some definitions here, brothers and sisters. But in short, it said to fill something up again. So what was here upon this earth before man, brothers and sisters? Let us look at a situation that took place in the third heaven before man came into existence. Let's go to Revelation, the 12th chapter. <clears throat> Revelation 12, are we going to read 7 to 9? Revelation 12, 7 to 9. Okay, verse 7, please read it. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought and his angels, and prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven. Mm -hmm. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out into the earth, 
and his angels were cast out with him. The first war on record, brothers and sisters, which we know anything about, took place in heaven, not on earth, between angelic spirit beings. We have Michael with an archangel, meaning he's in charge of other angels, and we have this other angel who started rebellion, and we are given his titles here. Old serpent, which it means he has been around a long time, brothers and sisters. Uh, he managed to persuade some of the other angels to follow him in rebellion. And God gave the order to throw him out. He did not want to go peacefully and put up a fight. He lost the battle and was cast out to the earth along with the other angels who followed him in rebellion. Let's look at him further, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Ezekiel, the 28th chapter. And we're going to read verse 11 to 18. Okay. Verse 11, please read it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardius, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabards, and of thy pipes, was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created. So, we have never seen any man looking like this, brothers and sisters. So, who are we talking about? What is being discussed here? Go ahead, read. 14. Thou art the anointed cherub. A cherub is an angel, brothers and sisters. Go ahead and read. That covereth. Uh -huh. and, and I have set there thee so. Yes. Thou was upon the holy mountain of, go of God. Uh -huh. Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Uh -huh. Thou was perfect in thy ways. From the day that thou was created, uh -huh. till in equity, in till in iniquity, was found in thee. So he was created perfect, brothers and sisters, and must have gone really out of his way to corrupt himself, and that's what he did. Iniquity is sin, and sin is transgression of the law. So he disobeyed a commandment of God. So go ahead and read by the multitude. Of thy merchandise, they have filled the mist of thee with violence, uh -huh. and thou hast sinned. Yes. Therefore, I will cast thee as profane out of the the mountain of God, mm -hmm. and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the mist of the stores, stones of fire. Uh -huh. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Yes. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness uh -huh. i will cast thee to the ground i will lay thee before kings and that they may behold thee mm -hmm. thou hast defiled thy sanctuaries by the multitude of thine iniquities by the iniquity of thy traffic therefore will i bring forth a fire from the midst of thee mm -hmm. it shall devour thee and i will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee so whatever beings brothers and sisters was there upon the earth at this time god destroyed they were not in man's creation this is why when man was created he was told to replenish the earth, brothers and sisters. So what we're talking about here, all the times of the dinosaurs and all that, the creatures that were upon the earth at this time. That's why we don't see no tyr Tyrannosaurus Rexes running around the planet today, brothers and sisters. But they were here because we have fossils and that which shows that they were here. But they were not in man's creation. Let the apostle Paul, uh, Peter tell us 
a bit more about this. Let's go to 2 Peter. Peter the third chapter are we going to read three to seven because this is amply fit for us in our time brothers and sisters go ahead now and read verse three knowing this first that there shall come in the last last days scoffers uh -huh. walking after their own love. But as that says, the earth is full of this here right now. And believe it or not, there's even people who said beforehand that they believed in this God of this Bible and saying that they were serving him. But what happened? Read. And saying, uh -huh. where is the promise of his coming? You had better believe it, brothers and sisters. I have someone in my own family who said this to me. From I was a child, I'm hearing that this God is coming. Where is he? Go ahead and read. For since the fathers fell asleep, uh -huh. all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. From what? From the beginning of from the creation. From the beginning of the creation. Go ahead and read. For this they willingly are ignorant of uh -huh. that by the word of God the heavens were of old uh -huh. and the earth standing out of the water and in the water. So he's telling us about from this time. And what happened to that time? Go Where, ahead. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water perished. That being overflowed with water perish he is not talking about Noah's days this was a period before that brothers and sisters go ahead and read but the hev heavens and the earth which are now which are now present times by the same word uh -huh. are kept in store yes reserved unto fire against the day of judgment what do you say and perdition perdition of ungodly men destruction of ungodly men brothers and sisters so he is warning and saying, listen, these people are woefully misinformed. They don't know what happened in time past. So the creatures that were upon the earth at that time, when God destroyed it. And he said, this current time here now, listen, hey, I don't want you to be misinformed. We have all sorts of people running around being ungodly. ungodly lifestyle ungodly arguments ungodly behavior on un, 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 it just is increasing worse and worse and he's letting us know brothers and sisters there is a judgment pending where god ain't gonna use flood waters anymore brothers and sisters he's gonna use fire and Jeremiah tells us a whole heap of this, this stuff. But well, we have to break it down, brothers and sisters. So now, we understand why the Lord told man when he brought him into existence to replenish the earth. Whatever was here before was destroyed. Let's go back to Genesis, the first chapter. Genesis 1, and we're going to read 28 to 31. Okay. Verse 28, please read it. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, mm -hmm. and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Mm -hmm. And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in the, in the which is the fruit of a tree yielding seed. To you it shall be for meat. Yes. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life i have given every green herb for meat and it was so so man was a herbivore and food giver brothers and sisters man's food was fruit and veg 
and even the animals also, the creatures, brothers and sisters. Nothing had to die. Go ahead, read. And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Mm -hmm. And the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So this is now day six, brothers and sisters. Let's go straight to Genesis 2. And we're going to pick it up at verse 1 and read to 3. Then we're going to skip to 7 to 9 and then read 16 to 25. Okay, go ahead and read. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all the host of them. Mm -hmm. And on the seventh day, God ended his work, which, is, which he had made. Mm -hmm. And he rested on the seventh day from all his work, which he had made. And God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because that in it, he had rested from all his work, which God created and made. So, brothers and sisters, there was no Sunday to Saturday. Just day one to day seven. And the seventh day was set apart, called sanctification, brothers and sisters, from all the other days. So, where did Sunday, Monday, and all that come from? We do other lessons on that, brothers and sisters. And our brothers around the Israel of God are doing some strong lessons showing uh, all of this stuff, how everything came to be where it is today. Now, let us look at the creation of the male part of man. Skip to verse 7 and read. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground mm -hmm. and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Mm -hmm. And man became a living soul. Now, man is formed from the dust of the ground. And the Lord did one thing to mobilize the man, brothers and sisters. He breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Or the soul is a complete person. Is, is this accurate, brothers and sisters? Is it true? A man will come out of the ground? Well, in the human body, and this is what the scientists and all them have confirmed, brothers and sisters. In the human body is found oxygen. Oxygen makes up 46% of the Earth's crust. Carbon. More than 99% of the carbon cycle is found in the Earth's crust. Hydrogen, natural or white hydrogen, is continuously produced in the Earth's crust. And scientists are now discovering there is so much more of it stored underground. What else is found in the human body? Nitrogen, calcium, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, sodium, chlorine, mangane uh, magnesium, iron fluorine zinc and so on all of which is found in the earth's crust brothers and sisters this word of god means exactly what it says continue to read sister jennifer ruth nine no eight and the lord god planted a garden eastward in Eden, mm -hmm. and there he put the man whom he had formed. Yes. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food, mm -hmm. the tree of life, also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, there were natural trees in the garden, but then we see there are two trees here which did not grow out of the ground, brothers and sisters. There's a lot of symbolism used in the scripture. You could accurately say that the, the Bible is a pictorial language. It has been translated into words for us, brothers and sisters. And the tree uh, of life here represents Jesus. And the tree of knowledge of good and evil represents the fallen angel, Satan, the devil. Now, this God gave the man one command. 
Let us read it. Skip down to verse 16 and read. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden mm -hmm. thou mayest freely eat. Yes. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. Mm -hmm. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Man is given one commandment, brothers and sisters. He can eat as much fruit and veg as he likes, but there is a different type of eating we do every day without even thinking about it. And that is the consuming of information with our minds. We are doing it right now. Man here is being told he can even get knowledge, brothers and sisters, from his maker, Jesus, but must not get knowledge from Satan, that fallen angel, because the day you do so, you will die. Okay, Sister Jennifer, where are we at? 18. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. So this tells us that it's time. This was just a man, brothers and sisters. So let's see what the, the, the male part of man. So let's see what God does do. Go ahead. I will make him and help me uh -huh. for him. And so he said he's going to bring forth a, a help me, a suitable companion for him. So what did he do? And out of the ground, mm -hmm. the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam uh -huh. to see what he would call them. Yes. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, uh -huh. that was the name thereof. But and sister, we see this God here now actively bringing forth the man, teaching him. And he wants him to be part of what he's doing. So he even let him give the animals name. He'll bring them all and say, what's that? That's a horse, that's a cow, that's a sheep, whatever it may be. The man had the responsibility to do that, brothers and sisters. So go ahead now and read. And Adam gave names to all cattle uh -huh. and to the fowl of the air and yes. to every beast of the field. Uh -huh. But for Adam, there was not found and help meet for him. Uh -huh. Now, the Lord delayed this brothers and sisters because he's got to prepare the man. Before he can have this help meet, he's got to know how to take care of himself and a household. An environment, he got to train him up, brothers and sisters. So at the time appointed, when he was ready, what did God do? Go ahead. 21. Mm -hmm. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, mm -hmm. and he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. Uh -huh. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man, uh -huh. made he a woman, yes. and brought her unto the man. This is the first tissue transplant on record. God takes, uh, uh, takes place by God himself. He took the rib from a man and makes the female part of man and brought her unto the male part of man. What for? Go ahead and read. 23. Uh -huh. And Adam said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Uh -huh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And a man understood something here. Very important brothers and sisters. On which we even in our time in our day need to get a grip of. Go ahead and read. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother uh -huh. and shall cleave unto his wife. And shall cleave unto what? His wife. Uh -huh. And they shall be one flesh. So there we have it, brothers and sisters. A man shall leave his father and mother not to find some woman and bring them in to shock them up in your mama and papa's house. Brothers and sisters, he has to leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife. Note that word, brothers and sisters. So for the purpose of procreation, that is why God did this. And note the way God ordained it, brothers and sisters, as man and wife. This is the first marriage on record. 
and what God declares a marriage that is between one male and one female. Did you finish that? 25. Uh -huh. And they were both naked, uh -huh. the man and his wife, Yes. and were not ashamed. Now, let us have a look at what Satan looks like, brothers and sisters, as he is described as the anointed cherub angel. All we see on, on TV uh, is, is this image being portrayed as a creature with two long ears, a long pointed tail, and a pitchfork in his hand. Oh, let us go to Ezekiel, the first chapter. Ezekiel 1. And we're going to read 1 to 14. Ezekiel 1, verses 1 to 14. Okay, Sister Jerufu, verse 1. Please read it. Now it came to pass in the thirteenth year, in the fourth month, in the fifth day of the month, mm -hmm. as I was among the captives by the river of Sheba, uh -huh. that the heavens were opened, and I saw visions of God. So this is a prophet Ezekiel, and Israel had been taken into captivity, but we are still the priest nation, so God is dealing with them. Go ahead and read. In the fifth day of the month, which was the fifth year of King Jehoiachin's captivity, uh -huh. the word of the Lord came expressly unto Ezekiel the priest, mm -hmm. the son of Buzi, yes. in the land of Chaldeans, yes. by the river Sheba, and the hand of the Lord was there upon him. Go ahead. And I looked, and behold, a whirlwind came out of the north, a great cloud, and a fire enfolding itself, and a brightness was about it, and out of the mist thereof, as the colour of an amber out of the mist of the fire. Yes. Also, out of the mist thereof came the likeness of four living creatures, mm -hmm. and this was their appearance. Yes. They had the likeness of a man yes and everyone had four faces and everyone had what four faces Go ahead. and everyone had four wings uh -huh. i'm and already getting scared Go ahead. and their feet were straight feet uh -huh. and the sole of their feet was like the sole of a calf's foot uh -huh. and they sparkled like the color of burnished brass Go ahead. and they had the hands of a man under their wings on their four sides, and they four had their faces and their wings. Yes. Their wings were joined one to another. Mm -hmm. They turned not when they went. Mm -hmm. They went every one straight forward. So he's seeing these creatures, brothers and sisters, and he's trying his best to uh, put into words what he's seeing. So go ahead and read. Ten. As for the likeness of their faces, uh -huh. they had Four had the face of a man. So from the front they had the face of a man. Go ahead. And the face of a lion on the right side. And on the right side they had a face of a lion. And they four had the face of an ox on the left and side. And they had a face of an ox on the left side. They four also had the face of an eagle. And at the back they had the face of an eagle. Go ahead. Thus were their faces, and their wings were stretched up upward. Uh -huh. Two wings of every one were joined one to another. Yes. And two covered their bodies. Uh -huh. And they went every one straight forward, whither the spirit was to go. They went, and they turned not when they went. Mm -hmm. As for the likeness of the living creatures, their appearance was like burning coals of fire mm -hmm. and like the appearance of lamps. Yes, it, and how fast did they go? go it ahead. went up and down among the living creatures, uh -huh. and the fire was bright, and out of the fire went forth lightning, uh -huh. and the living creatures ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now, that is super fast, brothers and sisters. They ran and returned as the appearance of a flash of lightning. Now, we've seen lightning flash, and it is quick, brothers and sisters. And we have seen the speed of light. So, that is fast. 
So what we want to do is find out what these creatures are called. So let's go forth to Ezekiel the 10th chapter. <clears throat> Ezekiel 10. Are we going to read 20 to 22? Okay, please read it. This is the living creature that I saw under the God of Israel by the river of Sheba. Uh -huh. And I knew that they were the cherubim. I knew that they were what? The cherubim. These are the cherub angels, brothers and sisters. Go ahead. Every one had four faces apiece, uh -huh. and every one four wings, and the likeness of the hands of a man was under their wings. Uh -huh. And the likeness of their faces was the same faces which I saw by the river of Sheba, uh -huh. and their appearances and themselves. They went every one straight forward. So this is what Satan looks like, brothers and sisters. And he, we read there beforehand that he was covered in bling, or call him the original blinger. So we have it up to today, brothers and sisters. So join us next Sabbath right here for part two because things are about to change. Thank you for your time. Thank you for being with us today. Please like, share, and subscribe to these lessons. Please also subscribe to all the other Israel of God camps. We meet here in the UK at the GRS Lions Club, Church Road, Erdington, Birmingham, England, B24 9BA, every Saturday from 2 to 6 p.m. At 6 p.m. UK time today, the lesson from headquarters will be the hour of temptation. The Israel of God is serving on many different platforms during the week, such as line upon line Bible study, brothers working together in the vineyard, Sound Doctrine Studios, the Coffee and the Bible Hour show, Let Us Reason Together, the Balm of Gilead radio show, Stick to the Script, Wednesday night question and answer session, Friday night prior night, Come on into my room, Teen Talk. Keeping It Christian, which is on Clubhouse. You can find further information on these events by subscribing to the IOG News app. We would like to thank the moderators, Sister S.B. Flowers and Brother Ozel Adams, Sister B.J., Brother Asaf, Brother D. Lee, and the entire graphics and productions team. We love and appreciate all family in and out of the house for your continued prayer and support, laboring with us in the vineyard. The Israel of God does have a dress code. Dress code for sisters. Please wear a head covering such as a hat, scarf, etc. This is required. Do not wear pants, shorts, skirts, mini or tight fitting bottoms, altar tops of any kind or revealing splits. Please wear modest apparel only. Dress code for brothers. Please remove any other covering upon entering the class. Do not wear sleeveless shirts, short pants, tight fitting pants, fleece, jogging pants, or any other revealing pants. Younger brothers, please wear belts on your pants and put them up on your waist. Tuck your shirt tail in your pants. Please be advised we do not wear fringes. These are today's notices. Please enjoy the rest of the Lord's Sabbath day. Thank you. Okay, let us stand and face Jerusalem to close out. Our Father. Our Father, which art in heaven, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, in earth, in earth, as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. 
give us this day. Give us this day our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not. And lead us not. Into temptation. Into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God of Israel. Praise the Lord God of Israel. In Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Uh -huh.